Thanks for staying with us. Today we'll be looking at a story about a man who a year after he got married found out that his wife was quite violent. And he always calls his family members to come. She calls um, her family member to come and assault him. Long story short, after they had one child, about a year after, she absconded. She absconded with the child and he didn't know where the mother and his child were. But out of being responsible, he kept sending money to um, his wife and child every month, over and over again. After a while, she came back, after a few years, um, and apologized that she wanted to be accepted back into his house. And even though she, he knew within his mind that this, this woman is violent, and this woman has not displayed what it takes to be a wife, um, she decided to, he decided to bring her back into the house. But she, what she really wanted was to use him to fund her father's funeral and to have another child. Because immediately after the funeral, she absconded again. And with this time, with the two children, now a year after, he's getting calls from the same pastor and family members that she's suffering mm -hmm. and she's sick. And... They are begging him to once again bring her back into the house. When I heard this story, when I read it, honestly, if it wasn't that, <laughs> it is a verified story. Like somebody wrote it and said <laughs> it happened to me and sent it to us in our email. I would say it's a lie that this is some Nollywood stuff or mm -hmm. Hollywood stuff. Like they concocted the story. Who does what? How can this happen? How would you even advise? Like it seemed like common sense, but... Remember, um, going back to our story, that the conversation we had on the, th on the Thursday show on Your View, where YK, um, Auntie Annie, was talking about how she, as an elder, gave advice that didn't really come from her mind, but she knew it was necessary to keep peace until she just thought about it that, I'll tell you my mind. Mm -hmm. So we have a group of elders and pastors who are begging on behalf of a wife that is violent and obviously doesn't want to be a wife just wants to be taken care of by a man and have her children with her. What should this man do? It seems pretty obvious. Exactly. Because my first question to anyone who is always looking to or asking if they should return to their abusive ex is, my question to them is, suffer not they tire you. Mm. Are you. Do you want to die? Why are you even asking in the first instance? You already know what you went through. So... Do you, want to, do you want to subject your mental health to uh, madness? Mm. Exactly. Because when someone keeps working your mental health up, you would start losing your self-esteem. You would lose sleep. You know, you, you ca it can even cause loss of jobs. and Your confidence is derailed. So why do you want to go back? Unless he's not telling us the whole story. Mm. You know when these stories come? They will not tell the full story of how not it their happened. Own perspective, the one that will whip up your own sentiment. E for them. Exactly. So unless he's not telling us the full story, maybe it was a toxic um, marriage, because it's quite unusual for a woman to just wake up one morning and say, "Today, I want to cause violence. Let me call my brother, my brothers, and my dad to come and assault my husband." Something must have happened. Maybe she, I'm trying to paint a scenario now. She's probably. Um, a short-tempered or rude woman, and when they have um, disagreements, she's you know always blabbing them out. And maybe the man then tries to discipline her by giving her one or two slaps. Her. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then it leads to a huge scuffle, and then they fight. And something must have been triggering the fight, unless this man is not telling us the truth. But if this is the whole truth, that you are very supportive, you always give her money. You always um, ensure that you know, they, they are comfortable. Then, uncle, I would advise that you go out and look for a woman that suits you. You're a spec. You're supportive. Mm -hmm. You are nice. You are respectful. And somebody is treating you like trash. Go out there. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. That's my own opinion. No? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, there's actually a lot to say here, mm -hmm. to be very truthful. But I'll start out by this. Um, a research was carried out by an NGO under the UN. Um, there was an increasing number of domestic violence against men from 2017 till last year, 2022. 
and it was said that recorded violence against men had increased from about 16%, no, 14.2% to 25.9% now in Nigeria as at last year. Now, the truth is, these are cases of, you know, um, commissions like the Public Complaints Commissions mm -hmm. and these NGOs working with them and actually relating with them and saying, okay, this is what is happening. Let's be truthful. Mm -hmm. I am a woman and they are, we are all women here. There are women that have very short fuse mm -hmm. when it comes to temper. And they will beat their husband. Yes, yeah, some actually do. People who will punch their husband and be shouting, hey, what? he's killing me. Hey, what? he's beating me. I, you, you, <laughs> no, I'm not joking. <laughs> Literally. Wow. You would actually see some women who are the ones doing the damage, and then they are crying, and then telling people the man is hurting them. And sometimes it's just a case of either the man physically is somebody who is not so healthy yeah. and weak, or somebody who is too in love mm. yeah. with such a woman to actually want to hit her back. So, wow. yes, we, <laughs> we know that women are at the receiving end of this kind of issues. Yeah. Sometimes. Yes, a lot of the time. But men go through a lot. Mm -hmm. There are men who can't even tell their wives no when it's time to do the do. Mm. And they collect their key. Eh? Are you serious? It's not play. Wow. If people have trained have to come out to tell you their stories, you're going to understand that. Yes, there are men who actually go through a lot in their marriages. This lady, from what I'm seeing here, obviously has family who's backing her up. Mm -hmm. And maybe just one family member that the husband obviously trusts. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have brothers. I have... Brothers, I don't have any sister, mm. all right? I have family friends who are like me, who they grew up with boys around them and they'll be like, ah, anything will happen. Nobody can chance you, chance them back, all of that. <laughs> well, it's true, but some people take it to the negative. Mm. So there are people who actually are not so patient when it comes to marriage or relating with people. And until men and people, even women too, understand, not everybody is fit to be a wife. Mm. Not everybody is fit to be a husband. Not everybody wants to have children with you because they love you. They want children for themselves. There are women, like this woman now, is one of the less than 6% of women who actually engage in sexual activity with their partner for procreation. Mm. Mm. They don't want to do it because they like it. They just want to have children that will live after them so they don't be like the Yoruba proverbial snake that walk through the <laughs> earth without any footprint. <sighs> wow. As so, in, it's a wild situation. <laughs> <laughs> so please. Just give me something contrary, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm going with baby lawyer. <laughs> because, um, you know, men at least speak about this violence. That's the mm -hmm. problem. And I also saw an, a, a statistics also, a non-governmental organization, the Purple Life Connection, has disclosed that over 25% of men right. suffer abuse in the hands of their partners in Nigeria. Eh? Yes, so these things are actually real, but men at least speak up. And so... Speak from your angle too. I, I honestly agree that women are sometimes abusive oh. and would be the ones shouting and saying, ah, this guy, nine day, nine day, nine day, right? And so for the lady, maturity was important. One of the things I heard about, read from this conversation was that the, the lady never honed up to say, I'm sorry. She kept sending people to apologize. Mm. So at what point did she really say that, um, please accept me, I'm sorry, I realize I've now come to my senses, but mm. she never did. She's obviously both, a narcissist. Both Very times so she was sending mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. in fact, that's the word. No, she's a She kept on like sending that. people there's, there's no other to way around apologize. Me. The third thing I was going to say also was that for a lady that goes and comes each time, there are health concerns for the guy. Mm. So you don't just go after a child, you come back, you beg, you get pregnant again. So if she's actually ill or she has a sexually transmitted disease, what then happens to the guy who's, who is mumuing, following, in love, wow. quote and unquote, right? So I love those three points you highlighted and maybe lawyer's perspective and we'll unpack it further after we take this call. Stella has called in from Aguda. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning, Auntie Tobe. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Okay, I'm a first-time caller. Thank wow, you. Wow, welcome to the show. Okay. Uh, and to talk about, thank you. You are doing a great job. I want to say something now. Three things. One, if the story is uh, true, you know, we, we just heard from the man, mm. not from the woman. So that's one hand. Then number two, you know where two elephants rise. Well, let us look at the children now. It's two of them. 
uh, fighting. But we have to con uh, we we need to consider the two children involved. Mm. Okay, that's another angle. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Number three again. You know, I'm from Anambra State. Mm? When I bring in the culture now, there sometimes you see that when a man, if he's a, a man that is sick and have run uh, gone back years and come back. You, the woman will be advised to, ah, he's your husband now, ah, take him mm. now. And the woman will still take him because of culture. The woman don't want to lose the marriage and all that. Now it's the woman. I pray, I pray that God will give the man grace. See, if there is proper marriage and you consider the children, you know you will have to give her another chance and to talk about please. Okay? That's a suggestion. Then finally, wow. that's a, another call for our parents. To train our children, prepare our girls for marriage. So that they will know it's not, you know, so that whatever, you can run and come, you know, but sometimes when it comes, you take it. Okay, so, so that's my, my, my take. Okay. Wow. Mm. So, I'm going to pause <laughs> where we're going to, because Stella just gave us a very, very valid perspective. Now, I know that ideally, this man wrote this story to us to advise him because he feels that he's really conflicted. He doesn't know how to address the situation. In his heart, he wants to walk out and follow um, Damola's advice that you, you, you deserve better. You are a speck. There's someone out there that will that cherish you. That is a speck. Which, is, which, is, which, which can be seen as valid. But Stella mentioned something. Stella reminded all of us now that if it were a man, if it were a man, how many stories have we heard that men would leave the house and come back home. Well, it is the same. Several stories. You know, several times that we hear a man will leave the house. The um, man will say, the man can leave the house, come back to the house, and they will beg the wife that, oh, he's your husband, you have three children for him. We'll he will take care of him. Mm -hmm. he can, after a few years, he will go again and come back. And men, we've heard those stories. And then we hear stories where a man is... Man, I've abandoned his family for 20 years, and you know, on his dying bed, they will bring him, mm -hmm. he's almost, almost gone, and bring him to the wife and the say, wife come and collect your, 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 load. your load, and she would nurse him till he gets back or till mm. he goes home. Mm. And we don't see that as a big deal. So why are we now telling a man not to do the same? Shouldn't the man be willing to say, this is my cross, I have already married, I will carry the cross and be praying, I will go to the war room, <laughs> and pray that God will transform my wife into <laughs> angel. Pray for your husband. They tell us, they pray tell us as women. Well, look hot for your husband. Pray for your husband. Pray for your husband. If your husband goes out, put a uh, protection. Up. Put protection in his box yes. so that he will not give and you speak problem. Into his life. And speak into his life. Pray for him. Kneel <laughs> down. Not, let's not change this conversation well, to a family conversation. No, 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 no. It's not a family <laughs> conversation. <laughs> but we're, we're actually it's trying actually to funny. balance this up. And it's okay. <laughs> and it's right. But let's remember that the story actually states that he was pleaded with mm. the first time mm. to take her back. Mm -hmm. And he did. That's an evidence. Mm. So he actually wants this your, woman. Your lawyership for me. Ah, no, my dear, is, is it against fine? everyone's um, advice? Yes, he yeah, did. Yeah. His, family His family said no. Yes. His parents said no. Mm -hmm. But pastors came to beg. Her family came to beg. She Their did not come came to, beg. to beg. She didn't come, oh, but they came on behalf of her. And then he took her back. And the same man who took you back, you after having another child, mm. and the same man to show that he's a loving man, he even sponsored your father's funeral. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My dear, I'm from Enugu State, though. When you have to bury sometimes <laughs> in our side in Igbo land, and I'm Enugu, <laughs> the money is not for Something children. Something huge. Do you understand? Mm. For somebody yeah. to do that, mm -hmm. it shows that to that man you still mean something. Mm -hmm. The best you would have done was to be better. This lady obviously needs help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, all right? Mm -hmm. This man's life is in danger. Madam Stella, I totally appreciate what you've done and everything you've said. But the same way we tell women that when they are in violent Toxic relationships, relationship. mm -hmm. Rondo, oh. please, my dear sir, we appreciate God for you. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to go and answer God in heaven <laughs> that somebody ended you when you should not have been ended. Absolutely. Please. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take this call on the, and then come back to you. Okay. Raphael, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, my, um, I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, so, I was uh, trying to chip in 
my little snack. Rafael, please, you need to mute the TV and listen to me. We are hearing you right now, so just speak. I think we had to, we have lost that call. So, Rafael will call back, I'm sure, and they will not clap for you again because you know what to do. <laughs> You'll be a second time caller by that time. <laughs> so, um, so I, I would like to hear um, Dami's opinion based on all that we have said now. So, we've heard from um, Baby Lawyer and Toby who are towing the line that, see, there are women that are toxic, they are violent women. And there are women who you will think of them and not, you will be, you'll be wondering, how were they born? Like, who incarnate. gave birth to these people? Oh, yes. How can, this is, this is being, may we not be unfortunate enough to meet such people. That's the yeah. thought. And how to deal with this suggested. But you were of the opinion, like, she should just walk away from that she, scenario. You know, like, she she should, you, you should, I mean, you should walk away from that scenario. Listening to Stella, listening to them, are you changing your mind or you still stay? You maintain the point that well, does not, she doesn't have time for... <laughs> no, 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 no. He shouldn't change his mind. He should not change his mind because I'm, I'm looking at it from two angles. It could be a toxic relationship. It could be a case of um, they're both toxic because if we... I, I would want to reference um, this guy's uh, story now, IVD and his wife, you know, how, you know, both of them were quite violent in the relationship mm. and at the end of the day, the woman lost her life mm. in the cause of... You know, mm. you know, burning the house and trying to, you know, create um, tantrums. So it could be a situation like that too. So abusers usually, or toxic pe people usually find love in, in themselves somehow. And it's probably a case of two captains in a ship. Mm. And when you have two captains in a ship, you are not going to head anywhere. So I would advise him to just, you know, take a break because... The woman is obviously a narcissist, just like you said, oh. and she already knows how to manipulate him. Definitely. So she has gone out to see if she could find another prey. Maybe she got tired of manipulating him and assaulting him, so she went outside to look for another prey. She did not find, and she, because she's looking for who to continually prey on, she's coming back again. So she will continually do it until mm. she finds the help that she needs. I'll take this call from mm. Festus and I'll come to you, Toby. Ah. Mm. Festus, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Regular color. <laughs> about two days ago, I told you a life experience. Yes, you did. A true life story. And we remember. That happened to my own brother. What the wife caught him, you know, she, you know, went set and uh, set up the brother and said she used the lady for ritual to mm. make money. Is it not in another format with this one? Yeah. Where she 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 she's not provoking the man. You see, people used to make mistakes. They will say what God has joined together. Let me pass on that. But there are some marriages God's hands are not yet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it may be for God's hands are not here. If God has joined, you know, you will see God's hand in, mm -hmm. you know, it will not get to this extent. Mm -hmm. The man should be away with that woman. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, anything can happen. Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what mm -hmm. will the righteous do? So the, the foundation is faulty. So mm -hmm. there is nothing here in that marriage. Mm -hmm. He should call it quit. Okay. So, yes. thank you so much, Mr. Festus. I remembered your story. Yeah, and, I remember too. Um, let me, for those that did not watch on Thursday, you really need to go and watch Thursday, but I'll just give you <laughs> the gist. Um, a woman set up his wife. I mean, a woman set up her husband mm. and went to hide the younger sister and then reported to the police that the husband used her younger sister for money rituals. And they arrested the man. Finally, they were able to find the, the woman. And actually, the girl felt guilty mm -hmm. and, and came, out. came out to say, like, I'm so sorry. I've been hiding since. I'm, I, I was not used for ritual. My, my, my sister, sister just wanted, didn't want a second wife. And when the, my sister heard that he's about to marry a second wife, now I to plot this storyline. And some elders 
came to beg on behalf of this woman. <laughs> so elders. these elders that come to <laughs> beg is another angle. But before we go into talking about those that come to beg, pastor that begged first time, second time, and now begging third time again, as in... Alongside her family members. Alongside the family members that seem to be always defending what is Who also used to come and beat him up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on her behalf. Exactly, because the story also had yes. many more parts. So be from what you said, I was going to say that there are people actually that indulge bad behavior. Mm. So why on earth would things like this happen and you go back to keep begging this man for forgiveness? Please forgive, please forgive. And so another thing I want to say also, because this case is a woman in question, I would have said people are users, but this lady in question can be termed as a user. Mm -hmm. Because why is it that it is when you obviously need help, you come back to, to ask him, for a favor, but then I would say again, we don't know the full story. Like Oyeda Mola is trying to, you know, give a balance to the conversation. We don't know the full story. So really, at the end of the day, too, if we would really give advice, we'd have to hear both parties. But based on what it is that we've seen today, I would say that this woman is a user, and even as individuals, we should be weary of people that constantly use us for our for their gain because we have. They reach out when exactly when they need so, us. So I, I know a, a family friend who is actually a landlady. She owns property. People live there. And then she stays with the tenant in the same building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she actually mentioned something like this, where she said there used to be a woman who they would have fights and all. And why the fights going on? She's screaming loudest. Her neighbors were actually feeling, like, ah, this man is horrible. What kind of a terrible thing? I want you people to are wicked. Mm -hmm. And... You know, they would sometimes talk and see scars all over his body. So they would think he swapped them and the woman fights him back. Till the day that thing was happening and it was so terrible, she had her own mother there, who is an elderly person in the house, and they were disturbing. So she has to give people and say, break the door down, what's going on? Apparently this woman was on top of that man. Hmm. Punching. Pistol. Hey! Pistol. Oh. Odo, that they used to pound okay, down. Okay, okay. Pistol, oh. And the doctor said, what is going on? And the man was shouting. That's why she they beat me every day. I don't know what thing I do. Am. I don't know what thing I do. Am. My family don't abandon me because of this woman. I don't do it again. That woman mm. is dead today. That woman. And that, yes. The woman, the woman is always beating. The woman is always beating her husband. She's dead today. Mm. And it's like after that issue, the landlady actually got police involved and said, no, this one, my conscience can't take it. You're a woman, but this one, I'm highly disappointed. The marriage was over. In a while after she left, it's like he was reborn. Mm. So there are people who we have to live with it and understand that see, the same we have very toxic men who are terrible. There are women who, when they say Delilah plus Jezebel and a few concussions together, if your son Why jammed them, <laughs> it would be funny. Mm. Oh, I'll take a call from Damaria then. Damaria from Jigawa. Mm. Interesting. I've never heard that name before. Welcome to the show. Good Damaria. morning. What does it mean? Hello, well, we can hear you. Salam alaikum. Oh, this is how she says salam alaikum. <laughs> she may be Christian. And you may be a Christian. <laughs> it doesn't mean Please, that. can you mute your TV and speak to us? You're live. Yeah, wa alaikum salam. Oh, a man. Dan Mariam. Dan Mariam. Interesting. From Jigawa. Welcome to the show. Well, yeah, it's, I'm a first time caller. Oh. <laughs> you already knew. <laughs> <laughs> because we've never heard that name, so we know. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Please go ahead with your contributions. Oh, I think we've lost. I think we lost that call. Oh, people are just we're just clapping for you. We don't want that to. Damala was going to jump in. Yes, I was going to ask. Since she's the abuser in the marriage, why was she always leaving? Why, why was she? And pay attention to the words the man used. Eloped. Mm. She ran away. Mm. It's as though she's running away from, from something. something. So according to, to the story, the man also mentioned that it seems like she's what? not someone that wants to stay and um, live in a home. She doesn't want to be a wife. She wants to live. She wants That's an independent thing. Is he a controlling life? person as well? Mm. Because that yeah, line like too, that. if you actually listen to it, she doesn't want to be under a man. Mm. So maybe he's been having conversations with her in, uh, he's been trying to control her, trying to tame her. You know, some women, some men feel insecure when they are with an alpha woman. Mm. They feel, ah, you are rubbing um, shoulders. Should there be an alpha woman? Yes, you can be an alpha woman and still be submissive. 
Yes, you can be an alpha woman. An alpha woman is a okay. woman that is... They can be an you know, alpha woman, but they can never be an alpha wife. Okay, maybe not an alpha yes. wife. Once exactly. you're a wife, yes. you are mm -hmm. submissive. Yeah, Once wife. you're a wife, you mm -hmm. are collaborating. Exactly. You are not domineering. You're not, mm -hmm. you're not coming with, like, I, I am smart. Masculine smart energy. And, yes, mm -hmm. that's not the plan. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, for me, I'm, I'm looking at this, listening to all of you, our callers. Mm -hmm. I'm read, readjusting the lenses with, with which I'm looking at this story. Mm -hmm. and, and I want us to address men that have been abused, but exactly. don't speak up. Because there are several stories where men undergo years of trauma and abuse Terrible. and ego wouldn't let them speak up. They yeah, don't shades. have who to share it with. Like, how would I the wife tell beats you? That, that how, when a woman they beat me. That beats my you? husband, my wife is the one <laughs> beating me. Like, how would I explain it? <laughs> mm. That my wife clears my account and I cannot talk. Who, how would I explain yeah. that when I get home? If I ask for food some days, I will receive punch. Like, <laughs> how would how would I explain? Huh? That's to anybody, yeah. and they will not look at me and say, you know, be man, mm -hmm. you know, or they will look at me and mm. the story is, I'm changing how they see me. Would my friends still respect me? Would my parents still support me? If they realize that I am in a marriage and I'm not feeling like I'm the man in this marriage. Mm. Toby, I can see you are... <laughs> NGOs, even today, you would hardly hear that they are out for men that have been... Yes, we don't have enough abused. NGOs that see to that. Yes, they majorly attend to women. And so because of our system that has been conditioned as the patriarchy mm -hmm. system, right, such that the man is seen as the head, as the one to be in charge over yeah. time, there, there are esteem issues around the fact that if a man speaks up against, you know, or speaks up saying that he's been abused, the society will first and foremost look down on him question is manhood, question is ability to stand as an individual. And it is very, very unfortunate because there are men like this, like the instance she pointed out, there are men like this who would actually die in that situation. If the door wasn't broken down that day, <laughs> you probably would just have heard that ah, this guy don't, you know, and that would have been it. So I think that the society today should be more open to understanding that first of all, a man is a human being. Mm. and can be abused too. Mm -hmm. So when we begin to open our minds towards conversations like this, I believe that more men will speak up. People looking at the statistics, I want to believe that there are more than that percentage it might recorded. Be 50 -50. It might Let's almost be, Salimusa exactly. Please. <laughs> Salimusa, welcome to the show. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm a first-time caller. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Don't take Thank our clap and run away. <laughs> Go ahead with your contributions, please. One of you said, uh, you people should have listened to the other side before mm. changing the matter, and which is a clear evidence of it. Mm. And you can't just hear a side and make a decision. Mm -hmm. But the fact still remains there are women who actually bully their husband. Mm. Just as you rightly said, some of these ladies, as the man explained, the woman elopes. Mm. In the marriage because they want to stay under the cover of marriage. And that is why you see they do what they feel like outside. The society sees them like, oh, this person is married. But outside that marriage, they do whatever they feel like. And some men, out of love they have for their wife, they become so mute. I don't think the world is scary. Mm. Because men naturally are born to be agile and strong. Mm. So they became so mute because of the love and to protect that marriage they are into. I'm a Muslim, but in Christianity it is stated in the Bible that you are bound in flesh and soul. You are one. Mm. So even if the Islamic religion doesn't allow divorce, but on a real case... Mm. Oh. We lost the call. Oh, wow. But we got your point. We got your point. Mm. We got your point. Um, we know that we are only talking based on one side of the story. Of course. And, but we also know that there are some scenarios where that side is the true side of the story, undeniably. And so we believe that the person were, this conversation we're having, yes, would serve the person who shared the story, but it would also serve other people who are not even confident enough to share their stories so that they will learn from all the things and pick what they need per time to use to suit themselves. Maybe like, you're going to... I was going to say one thing. 
There's a key ingredient in this. Is it, is it a baby lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> There's a key ingredient in this story as to other similar stories like this mm -hmm. that we are choosing not to deal with. We are choosing not to actually expose and admit. And it is that thing called shame. Mm -hmm. Everybody is afraid of speaking up about something because they will be put to shame. You mentioned men not speaking up because society is going to see them in a certain way. As a man, you're supposed to be macho. As a man, you're supposed to be this way. As a man, you're supposed to be that. Well, a society that tells men that men, they shouldn't cry. What do you expect? So for me, I'm saying till humans, men, women, everyone begin to deal with that issue of shame. Learning to be shameless, especially when your life is on the line. Mm -hmm. You might not be feeling like it, but you will know that something is about to happen. It's an emotion. You have you to are feel not it. Careful. Mm -hmm. Now, we are speaking about um, abuse and domestic violence. Domestic violence is the physical part. What about abuse to men when they tell their wives, let's do the do mm. as part of the marriage? And the man will say, that head I told you to buy for me. Hey, it's far. The one millionaire I asked for my business. Be like, you don't, you, you don't have money. So you, so you can you come. Can you, want, you can be a man in the room, but you are not a man anywhere else. Oh, that's Emotional abuse. trauma. There, there are women who will hmm. come. Somebody called, you know, on, on my radio show and stated a story and said his wife, whenever they have quarrels, will tell him, you're shouting your children, your children. How are you sure the children are your own? Eh? Jesus. Why do you tell a man that? And then he had to get the NHS done. They were his, but... How do you say that to a man? Because you're looking for I, what I, you can destroy. Use yeah, Honestly. Exactly. I, like, I like the way we are, break, we are breaking these so things that, down. That, so women that, that, women that, yes. women that go through these things. Who would come and say, mm -hmm. hey, see your mates. Is it not, is it, your husband just bought a car? What are, bicycle, did you buy for me? Are you Yo. a man? Oh, bicycle tire. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bless you, my dear. <laughs> the truth is, what we've done today mm. is a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. We really cannot end this conversation they would need we would have to have a part two mm -hmm. because um over time we we'll always see the woman's perspective and rarely do we get to talk this in depth about what men, men also go through yes. in um, abusive marriages emotional and physical and it's impacts the confusion and the dilemma they are facing with how do i deal with this i want to be a good man but i'm finding myself here yeah. so we'll, we're hoping that truly this ignites the conversation within the society. We are hoping that we take it beyond what you've heard on the show today. I, we have a guest who is going to join us and it's like a profile. We have some um, YouTube comments and I'll just give us a few seconds to do, take the YouTube comments and final words. Okay, uh, Benedicta Dayton says, the lady is a user. They say that we should marry someone who loves us more than we do because it flips in marriage. But I think mm. this lady had no iota of love for the man even before marriage. She goes on to say, that's why when you ask a lady out and you can see that she doesn't reciprocate, even, if in, the, even, if, even in the littlest ways, stop. If not, you'll be trying to please her even in marriage. It takes two to tango. Aunt Nam says, maybe she's a lesbian. <laughs> Just leave the horrible woman. Then he goes on to say, how many of these people kill their husbands? They can't control their emotions. Control yourself. Abused men are like abused women. Not easy to live and speak out. Mm. God help us all. Wow. Amen. Final words? Okay, so my final words on this would be that the man, because the way I am looking at it, it's as though he is still feels some bond with the woman. That is why he's even asking for this advice in the first place. So you should not lose yourself just because you are in love with someone. And this is one of the reasons why most men, or let's just say some men, do not like to show emotions in their relationships or marriages. You hear women complain, oh, my man is not romantic, he doesn't do this, he doesn't. It's because they don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to be so attached to you such that you can then manipulate them with the emotions um, that they have. But for this uh, man's story, I would advise that you um, seek help, build your self-esteem, go out, meet people, join a church group if you are a christian or go to the gym meet new people mm. i can i want to repeat again you are a speck you are responsible you are you know you so you, you are supportive loving, you're respecting loving capable. exactly you are forgiven uncle you are a speck go out and look for a babe <laughs> Maybe so all right so for me i would just briefly give this definition of love that i do and when i do people say why wow 
Um, love is, this is the definition, of course, God is love, the Bible. Yes, mm -hmm. we appreciate that. <laughs> That's the guy. But I tell people that love is giving someone else the capacity, the instrument, the ability to destroy you mm. and trusting that they will not. Mm. Mm. Now, when somebody... We should quote you. <laughs> when somebody mm. cannot understand that that's a sacrifice from you and your soul and your being to them, and then they use it to manipulate you, please... I want you to sorry, kaba kaba, mm -hmm. like congas. We draw the consent from them. It's just one. Mm -hmm. Run away. Absolutely. Honestly, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize. <laughs> I need to take the break right now. And um, like I said, I just started the conversation. It's still going to continue. There'll be a part two. Maybe next week, Saturday. Honestly, we just need to still continue this conversation. Mm -hmm.